Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming here. I'm going to talk to you about a PostgreSQL extension that's named Multicorn, which allows you to write foreign data wrappers in Python. Uh, is anybody here already familiar with this extension? Yes. Did you use it? I haven't used it yet. Okay. Thank you. So. Uh, the slides will be published in the Creative Commons license, so if you want to download them later, no problem. Um, I start by talking a bit about myself. I'm a DBA at uh, Dalibo. Dalibo is a French PostgreSQL support company, and uh, I've been able to work both with Python as a previous career as a developer and now as a DBA. So, what will we talk about today? First, I'll give a general foreign data wrapper overview so that everyone is clear with the concepts involved here. Then a brief tour of how to install and how to use Multicom with a small de uh, demo example. And the bulk of the, of the talk <coughs> will be dedicated to how to implement your own foreign data wrapper in Python. What you can do with Multicom and how does it translate uh, in your code. You'll see it's really easy. Then we'll talk about a bit with uh, the difference, about the difference with uh, C, C language uh, for data wrappers. So how does it work in the internals? So, um, have any of you already used foreign data wrappers? Yes? Anyone? Which ones? Postgres? Yes, any other for another relational database system or something like that? No, okay. So, uh, foreign data wrappers allows you to access remote data sources as table, as foreign tables, uh, that's what they are for. There's primarily four object types managed by PostgreSQL that you should be aware of, and all of this is defined by the SQL med specification. First, among these four objects, there's the foreign data wrapper itself. A foreign data wrapper is just a set, in PostgreSQL, is a set of uh, C language routines, which are called as hooks during the, the planner phase and the, ex the ex execution phase, and so on. Usually, you install an extension that will create one foreign data wrapper, which is named after the extension. That's the case for Postgres foreign data wrapper, the file foreign data wrappers, and every foreign data wrapper I'm no, uh, I know of. Um, as a side note, if you can't understand me because of my accent, feel free to say it. <laughs> uh, once a foreign data wrapper has been installed, uh, in order to use it, you will have to create a server. A server is directly attached to a foreign data wrapper, and that's where you usually will define the connection options and so on to access a remote data source. The server itself owns foreign tables, which is what we are all interested about, how to read and write data, on data in foreign sources. And it is attached to a server and can define more options than what is defined on the server. For example, with Postgres foreign data wrapper, you can define the table name and so on. And it, it looks like a regular table. That means we can execute select statements as well as DML statements. So it's 9.3. The fourth object type that is of interest to us today is the user mapping. A user mapping allows, to, allows you to store specific information for a user pertaining to a server. That's where you will usually store the, the username used to connect to the remote data source if you need a notification system or passwords or things like that. So this is the 
basic example for using the file foreign data wrapper, you have to create the extension that will then create the foreign data wrapper for you, then create a server, and then you can define foreign tables with the specific options for the file foreign data wrapper, like the file name, encoding, delimiter, and so on. So, in all of this, what is Multicorn? Multicorn is a PostgreSQL extension which allows you to write foreign data wrappers in Python. <coughs> it is licensed under the PostgreSQL license. You can find the code on GitHub and the documentation on its own site. It's also released on PJXN, the extension network for PostgreSQL. Uh, so it was developed at Cosea, which is my former employer. <clears throat> you may be, you may, be, you may be, ah, sorry, you may have been asking yourself, what is the purpose of such a thing? Why would you ever want to write a foreign data wrapper using anything other like other than C? Well, developing a, a foreign data wrapper is quite complex. You have to understand all the routines you need to implement, implement them in C. If you need to access an, another data source, you usually have to use another library written in C2, which can access uh, this. So the goal is to provide you with ease of prototyping. It's really easy to get a first prototype that can access remote data using Multicon. The second goal is to be able to use the Python language and its ecosystem. You can use any Python library on your server, and that makes some quite complex tasks really easy because we have a rich set of libraries in Python. How many of you are users of Python? Okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> How does it work with regards to classical foreign data wrappers. It's one extension that will create only one foreign data wrapper in the PostgreSQL sense. So then you will have to create individual server using individual Python module that will implement the core functionality. Basically, it offers a, P a Python API on top of the C API. But this API is really simplified and take, uh, take care of the bulk of the, of the work for you. The extension itself is bundled with some modules. Some of them are really usable. Some of them are just uh, uh, nothing more than examples on how to do some things. Among these modules is uh, SQL Alchemy. I don't know if you know it. It's a library in Python which allows you to connect to, which provide um, an abstraction layer of uh, SQL and that allows you to write portable SQL amongst multiple RDB, RDBMSs. That's really useful because that means you can connect to any relational database management system using Multicorn. Uh, there's an LDAP provider as well as an IMAP. You can also read from file system or Google. And an example that I didn't write here, but that is quite useful, is you, you can also read from, from Git. I don't know if you attended the previous uh, conference this morning about SQLite. So using Multicorn. The same results that we saw today with a hypothetical uh, Git based on SQLite can be used with the real Git now because it's really easy to implement a foreign data wrapper for that. It's a bit slower, sure, because uh, the data is stored in Git format, but that's the kind of thing you, you can do. It's 
In total, it's something like 20 lines of code, of Python code, to parse a whole Git repositories and extract the comments. Installing the extension is really simple. You can either get the sources from GitHub or from PJXN. Then you run make install and on the database that you want to use it on, create extension multicorn and you're done. I've got quite a display problem. I hope it's no big deal. Then you, like every other foreign data wrapper, you have to create a server. And the thing of importance here is that one option is mandatory, is the wrapper option. It allows you to <coughs> specify which Python class will implement the core features. And then you can create tables that will use this server with the specific options uh, that, the, that the Python module needs. So, we are going to see how to implement such a simple throw-in data wrapper. Do you guys have any questions for now? No? Fine. So, first thing first, we have to create a Python project. Since, you, since the bulk of you seem to be familiar with Python, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, can you read that from the back of the room with the contrast? Great. So if you're familiar with Python, you may recognize a simple setup script. There's not really much to do here. Just specify what your project name is, the license. If you have uh, dependencies, you will put them uh, here. But it's really Python stuff. It's easily documented uh, everywhere on the internet. What's interesting is how to write a foreign data wrapper. That's the simplest foreign data wrapper you can write. Something that doesn't do anything. See? You only have to, implement, to extend the foreign data wrapper class and override the execute method. That's all that's needed. There's a, there is also other hooks. But to get something basic, you don't have to do much more like that, much more than that. So we're going to install this new model. And I've already run this before, but <coughs> the thing is, uh, if you don't do anything in the execute method, right. there. if you don't do anything, <coughs> you're going to use the uh, default return value of Python, which is returning none, which is then interpreted by Multicorn as returning no rules. So we now have a foreign data wrapper that doesn't do anything. That's not really useful. <coughs> but as, as we saw, it's really easy to get, uh, to get something working. We covered the basics. <coughs> We have the project, the project structure, a foreign data wrapper that does nothing, but it works. It's tasty. Now, we will see how to actually do something. For this example, I chose to pass log files. Nothing really complicated. The goal will be to pass a log file and return rows based on a pattern that allows us to pass the, the lines. So to do that, we will need options. 
First of, first of them being, what is the log file we want to pass? How is it handled by Multicorn? It is handled by uh, instantiating your, your class by giving it a list of options, a dictionary of options, and a list of columns with the columns definitions, their types, etc., etc. And then you can do whatever you want with that. Raise errors if, you, if an option is missing or I don't know. And maybe adapt your behavior based on the column definitions. What is important to know here is that the first time in a session that you access a foreign table, an instance will be created and it will be cached for the rest of the session. The cache will be invalidated if you change an option or something like that. But if you want to perform uh, initialization, you should do, do that on the constructor. It's guaranteed that it will be called only once per session. So that's where you would initialize connection, maybe, or things like that. So let's walk through, through the code. In the constructor, we're just calling the parent constructor, which will take care of keeping a reference to the options and et cetera, et cetera. And then we will get some options. The log file is mandatory. We will raise an error. This error is, will be translated to a PostgreSQL error using um, e-report and uh, other error handling routines. And a line pattern. So the line pattern will just be a regular expression with groupings which will define the columns. And then the execute method will just open the file and for each line of the file, yield a row. So this can be used with generators. You could also have, used, uh, have returned a list directly, but it's better to use a generator here. So all in all, all, in all we have 22 lines of code here for passing a log file and exposing it as a, as a foreign table. Nothing fancy to see here. So if you want to test that, my PostgreSQL log file from the, 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 the current server. And here we can pass all, the, all those things. Here we create two tables. One, the first one, which take only the, the message, the, so the whole line. The other one is a bit more complicated with a regular expression, which is a bit more complicated to pass for the human mind. And you will have access to the, the columns defined here. All with 20 lines of code. So there we have a basic prototype that works, but there's so much more we can do. For, for example, we'd like to push down uh, conditions to the foreign server. We'd like to optimize a bit what, uh, what conditions can, can, can be passed. Multicorn will pass 
the, the, the course, the predicates you wrote in your SQL query, and translate that into a set of Python objects that you can actually use to push to the foreign server. That's what the SQL alchemy foreign data wrapper does. It will push that at where condition to the foreign relational system. Uh, that's what the IMAP uh, server does. It will translate that to complex IMAP conditions using flags or uh, headers uh, conditions. You can look at the existing code for some example on how to use that. Here, we're going to implement a really simple optimization. We're, we assume that the log is ordered by date and that we don't need to pass the, the log file, the whole log file, if we're presented with a condition of the form date less, uh, less than some date. So let's see how we can do that. For that, we will need to identify <coughs> the current date. Well, we've seen a bit earlier that the constructor method was passed two arguments, the options, and a list of column definition. A column definition is just a Python object with the following fields. So you have access to the column name, the type OID, the type OID, the type name, the base type name without formatting if it's a uh, for example, you would have numeric or numeric with some type mode backed in. And you can have options on the table itself, like with a, for a regular foreign data worker. To receive the condition, the execute method is called with two arguments, a list of conditions. It corresponds to um, the ended list of qualifiers, if you have an OR condition, you won't be able to push that down. And this list of qualifier is passed as a list of qual objects of the form field name, operator, and value. The value is translated into Python uh, as best effort. That means if your colon if, uh, is of, uh, if your colon type is date, you will receive a Python date object. Same goes on for integers or things like that. And what is important to know is that all conditions are going to be rechecked by PostgreSQL because Multicon doesn't want to get in the way of implementing foreign data wrappers and won't force the developer to declare what conditions will actually be checked on the foreign side. So it doesn't remove those conditions from the, from the conditions that should be executed locally. I don't know if that's clear. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a choice. But when you're implementing a foreign data wrapper in Python, you're not really concerned about rechecking conditions on the PostgreSQL side. That should be fast. So how are we going to do that? We are going to pass the quarter arguments and stop iterating when the date is bigger than what we need. So now we get gets a bit more complicated. We are, going to, we are going to need to track which colon represents the date in the logs. This is done with a colon option, is timestamp. And once we locate that, we know that we have this option. And then we will be able to build the regular expression pattern to, to build that. And in the execute method, the only thing we have to do is look for a specific condition that we want to optimize for. If we find it, then we can optimize this. And don't care about, uh, we don't, then we don't need to pass the rest of the file if we found the condition we were looking for. So.
we are now at less than 50, 50 lines of code for passing options using uh, using condition pushdown and a bit of uh, of bookkeeping with regards to regular expression, but it's all in less than 50 lines of code. If you want to if you want to implement this with a regular foreign data wrapper in C, uh, I don't know how long that will be. So this is a, sp a small example, but you could imagine further optimization to that. If we have uh, greater than condition on the date, we could pass the file from the end of success, stuff like that. If you want to implement it, go on. Left an as an exercise to you. And now we're getting to the interesting stuff. Let's say uh, we want to perform joins across multiple foreign tables. We know that for a specific backend, we can we have the equivalent of an index on that line, and it will be really cheap to pull just one line with a condition in the, of the form id equal something, for example. What this will allow to do is to declare that to Multicorn, which will then genera generate parameterized paths to Postgres, which will then be able to use them to plan its query accordingly and to perform a nested loop in the right order instead of fetching all the data and performing a merge join, a merge join locally. So this will allow you to avoid fetching the whole data from the data source. So, how is it implemented? Um, what do you need to do from the Python side? You just need to implement the get pass keys method, which is really a simpler way, a dumbed down way, to inform the planner that yes, I have uh, a parameterized pass on the remote side, and if you send me a query with a where condition, uh, using this uh, this colon, you can be expected to receive that much lines. This has been this has been done like that instead of using the whole analyze mechanism, because for prototyping it's really much easier to just declare what you have instead of making PostgreSQL collect the the statistics and getting a representative sample. That's complicated stuff. If you ever need to do that, feel free to fall back to a real C implemented foreign data wrapper. Here it's all about ease of use. <coughs> so when you declare these pass keys, it will be compared to Multicorn against possible condition about possible uh, implied join equalities to, to build parameterized pass for the optimizer to choose from. So, Let's say that we have a base table which has uh, 100 rows. The foreign table has 100,000 rows. If you know that it will be extremely cheap to fetch just one line using the ID, you can declare a pass key using the ID with an expected row count of one. The get well size uh, method is used to estimate how many rows with, well, with uh, what average width you're expected to fetch if you fetch the whole table. So that's exactly what, what, we, what we do here. We create a new class which we index. That's fake, but that's not the problem.
So what do we do here? Yeah. If we create one point table that will not return any pass keys and one other one another that will return pass keys. What I want to show you here is how the planner will change the execution plan just based on those uh, declarations. create a new server using this new class, a new foreign table using these two. So if, you, if we try to join this table with a local table, a local table that has to be created, Here we see with the pass keys, we have a nested loop. We are going to perform a sex scan of, on the local table and for each row from there, perform a foreign scan with the ID. If we didn't declare that, we would have that kind of plan which with a foreign scan which will fetch all the rows locally and perform on a hash join locally. So you will have to fetch the whole batch of rows to perform a join locally. So this allows you to perform some optimization. It's no join pushdowns because that's not possible right now with foreign data wrappers, but it can help in some situations. I've heard of a user successfully performing uh, queries with up to seven joined uh, foreign tables with acceptable response time only with uh, customizing a bit uh, the, the, the parameter and space pass that he wants to use. So it's really powerful. So now we've performed some simple optimizations. We informed the planner about said optimization so that he can choose the best pass for the job. If you want an actual example that does something um, that uses this technique, you can look at the IMAP for a data wrapper class, which makes some basic assumptions about the number of email per, destin per, um, per person, about the message ID being unique, and so on and so on. You can see uh, how it works that way. So, the next topic is how to write in a foreign table. Because now, since 9.3, we are able to write into foreign tables like they are regular ones. It's a simple C API, really. But the Python one is even simpler. You just have to implement those three methods in there with a value which, be, which will be a dictionary of the values you want to insert with column name on one side and with column name as the key and the value as the value. Update will be the same with the old value and the new value, used like that, and delete will take only the old value. Uh, for, for, your, for your foreign data wrapper to be able to use this API, you have to declare an attribute that will be the row ID column. That is used internally to track, uh, <coughs> to track which row uh, is which. So think of it as kind of a primary key. Uh, for transaction support, uh, you can implement the pre-commit, commit, and rollback method, which are hooks that will be called at different time during the transaction uh, lifetime, life cycle. So if you want to implement transaction support because your remote data source supports it, you can do it like that. It's done in the SQL Alchemy foreign data wrapper. So 
the transaction will be, will be supported that way. There's a helper class which helps you to write um, false transactional support by just keeping a cache of what has been updated, etc., etc., and just pushing it at the end of the transaction. But um, be aware that it should only be used when you have really no transactional capability and you want to fake them because it's better than nothing. And this chart shows how the um, C API are translated into Python method code. Uh, the foreign data wrapper API defined at the plan stage defines these hooks to be called, which will be translated as uh, get real size and get pass keys methods, the methods which we've seen before, which allow you to uh, fake parameterized pass. Get foreign plan is built internally uh, in multicorn and doesn't do anything fancy. <coughs> and then at execution time, the only thing that, is, that will call any Python code is iterate point cat scan, which will call the execute method, keep a reference to the Python iterator returned by your, uh, by your method, and then at each iteration, fetch a new value, return it to the Postgres backend, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, the goal of Multicorn here is just to be simple and to use for prototyping. If you really want to build something uh, dur durable or fast, or I don't know, you're better, you're, you're, you're better be prepared to write it in C, because that's not the goal here. The goal is to provide you with, with ease of prototyping to see if your ID is viable before you invest time writing a full foreign data wrapper. Or if you need some one-off scripts to import data in your database or something like that, that can be a great tool for that too. But yes, think, uh, think about those uh, considerations if you plan to use it. Do you have any questions? Uh, 2.7 and from 3.3 .3 to 3.4. And if someone, if someone knows how to use Windows or the Windows build tools, I'd be happy to take any patch to support it because it's been uh, commonly re requested. But I have absolutely no idea how to build an extension or work with Python or with anything Windows in general. Other questions? Yes? Uh, sorry? Um, the SQL Alchemy foreign data wrapper can be used to query this database. Uh, I've heard of users using it to query uh, MySQL, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, but uh, no one with Sybase or Oracle, I'm afraid. But normally it should work because the underlying library support it, providing the, whole, the driver and so on. Yes, yes. Uh, for this, you should look at the SQL Alchemy uh, project page, which tells which databases are supported with, uh, with which uh, third party library. And normally, if you install that and specify the right connection string, you're good to go. Other questions? So thank you for your attention.